Hey guys, Comic Crack, back with a one shot. Got some uh, Alice Coltrane playing. I thought it would be fitting with this one shot. It's from a CD called Astral Meditations from 1968, and the track is called uh, Blue Nile. Love Alice Coltrane. Uh, most of her stuff. There's some that I'm not as crazy about, but she's got a really nice groove. Um, beautiful music. Uh, yeah, some of it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, so today in the one shot we're going to be talking about uh, Six from Sirius by Doug Mensch and Paul Gulas Gulasi, 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 let's go with Gulasi. Um, I've been getting into some of this epic comics line stuff. Uh, I'm going to do a review of another mini series, I just don't have it here. Um, I thought I'd start on a high note because the other one I wasn't as crazy about. Um, this was a four-issue miniseries, and there was a six from Sirius 2, which was another four-issue miniseries I, I saw when I was looking into, um, into this series. Um, July 1984 was the first issue. I'll just show you quickly the covers before we start talking about it. We'll listen to some Alice and look at some great covers. There's number two. My favorite of the four. Printer started off there for some reason. There we go. Very strange, sorry. All these strange noises going on. I tried filming this before, and uh, right of course I had left the odd, the sound on on my phone, and of course the phone started ringing, and the sound on the music was too loud, etc. Anyway, so um, right off the top, I really enjoyed this series, and the thing that I enjoyed the most out of it was this Paul Gillespie's artwork. Boggles in my mind. It is it's so beautiful. Um, and so, I don't know, it's just, the colors are amazing as well, and his character design is incredible, and these landscapes that he creates and everything are just beautiful. So we'll talk a little bit about that to start before we talk about the story. So apparently it was a project that they worked on for, I believe it was two years, from what I can gather just from the info that's in with these comics. Um, Paul Lacey and Doug Mensch worked on Masters of Kung Fu, I believe was the title, right? Uh, Master of Kung Fu, yeah. So, and that, that series kind of broke uh, Gulacy as far as a ske the schedule was too much for him to handle. Um, it really just burnt him out. So he kind of, uh, from what I gather, he gave up comics and went into advertising. Uh, there was more money, the schedule was a little lighter, um, he could still flex his creative muscle and stuff and get paid for it fairly well. So then they start talking again and Mensch uh, suggests the idea of doing a series and Gulacy says he's on board but um, it can't be something that's on a schedule. Um, it can't, he doesn't want to do a superhero book. He's got all these kind of terms. It's like, you know, I'm happy in my advertising world. I do want to go get back into comics in some degree, but uh, it has to be on my own timeline. Um, I can't be pushed. So originally what it was going to be, it was going to be a story for Epic Illustrated, the magazine. As they started talking about it, it went from 20 pages to 40 pages to 60 pages to 100 pages to finally, I think, 120 pages or whatever it was at the end. Um, Epic decided, or Marvel decided, that instead of putting it in, in uh, Epic Illustrated, let's do a four-issue miniseries for Epic Comics, which has now been launched um, with the start of, like, I think Dreadstar was the first title. 
and stuff like that. So they were very happy about it, and literally two years after they started it, it uh, starts seeing publication. Um, now, he talks a little bit, I, I would love to, uh, one thing I'm going to do now that I'm finished, like I literally just finished reading it, I'm going to be looking into uh, Gulacy's info on the internet, because he talks about doing all the coloring himself in various, in various mediums, like, you know, everything from pencil crayons to... Uh, um, paints to acrylics to this that and the other let me see if I can find so let me have a quick peek sorry go about your business uh, the coloring is a result of an arcane and complex process of experimentation utilizing a, ver a variety of mediums including acrylics markers colored inks and pencils so that's what he did, and I mean it. Like I said, it just shows the the layouts blow my mind, the colors boggle my mind, and I really want to understand more about it. Stunning artwork, and I know I've seen him before in places, but this little mini series has definitely piqued my interest to look for a lot more from him. And of course, as soon as I can find the series two mini series, I'll be grabbing that. Um, so far, and then just like a little word about Epic Comics. Um, so far, I'm, I'm digging their stuff. I, I know that, uh, I think when I was on the Comic Sock podcast there, Travis was saying that there was a time where he picked up anything that was Epic Comics related and got into some stuff that maybe wasn't as exciting for him. Um, and I could see that. Uh, like I said, this other miniseries that I picked up, I wasn't as crazy about. But... Uh, I'm willing to take a chance because it seems like there's a lot of miniseries besides Dreadstar that went on for quite a while. Um, let's look at that there, that's great. Um, so the story, what we have is we have a group of six, uh, I don't know if they're, they're kind of like a, an organization, they're not like a, they're almost like a special units. Um, group, the four men, two women, and they're sent on to do this mission. There's two planets that are at war. There's a moon in the middle that is, um, these, these mystics have kind of, like these spiritualists have kind of, uh, went to this planet and it's flourished into a beautiful planet that's now caught in the middle of this war. Um, and uh, how they're going, they, they're, they're going in basically to rescue uh, Phaedra, who's this woman here. She's being held prisoner by her own people because they don't want her to attend the peace negotiation talks. Uh, for some reason, which we're not aware of until much later on. Um, so it's there, the first issue deals with them breaking her out of prison. I'll show you this page again. They disguise themselves in an asteroid and uh, attach onto the ship. Um, the ship is filled with um, fax men, which are facsimile, uh, human facsimiles. Um, so basically robots. And people have, there's the ability that humans now have to uh, project their minds into these facsimiles. Um, and you find out later that some characters have been put into these bodies of our, our main characters. Um, it's pretty great. It's great at he's great at uh, creating like a world. Uh, no problems there. I did have a few problems. One of the main problems being that almost every balloon, when they're talking to each other, they're saying their names uh, constantly, and that started irritating me a little bit, especially. When you're getting into like issue three and issue four, uh, it really just irritated me. And the other side of it, um, the one thing that I will say about Gulacy's artwork is I had problems. Every once in a while, I had problems with um, like look at those colors, look at the blues in there. Um, I had a problem following the dialogue. I wasn't sure which way I was reading. I found some of the balloons kind of wrapped differently. That 
I, I thought I'd reading reading them down because it's one person talking, but you're supposed to read them across, and then I think I'm reading them across, and you're supposed to read them down by panels. So there was a few times where I got confused. Um, so in this, they kind of create a diversion by uh, opening all the other cells to the prisoners, and all hell breaks loose there for a bit so they can escape with Phaedra. Phaedra comes and meets the crew, um, and then we're kind of the last four pages or so were were met with their boss, the Sirius, the six from Sirius's boss, who is kind of outlining their plan for them. And uh, they can only hear the plan a part at a time. They don't get the overall thing. They're, they're kind of led. So there's the end of the last. And this here, last the last Galactus story, that's uh, Epic Illustrated number 26 uh, that's also on the list um so then we end with that and then number two just kind of continues exactly from where we left off um you learn a little bit more about phaedra in this issue you learn more about the facts man one is one is kind of on their tail as far as um he's sent to kill her kill everybody there he's his, his whole soul mission so they have to sacrifice their ship one of the other characters uh has a link uh, Zimatim Lar is her name, and she has a link to anything computerized. She's able to communicate with it or, or have a bond. So the big thing for her was she didn't want to leave the computer um, behind to be destroyed. So we keep going there. Um... They meet the, they finally do come up to meeting the five spiritualists and find that their bodies are sitting around a table in a cave um, and they're now a, another, another life form where they exist kind of in the ethereal kind of plane and stuff. So they are able to communicate with them and they start communicating with them and of course Phaedra has a special bond with them and they want her to come to their side to Forget the forget the world of flesh. Come and live with them in this astral kind of plane. Um, and it just kind of goes from there. I, I, I won't go too much into these last issues because I don't want to spoil too much. Um, there is a couple of interesting twists and turns, and overall, it's a, a pretty cool story. Um, even if it is a little, it's it's more a love story than anything, of course. Uh, just set in this sci-fi kind of world. Uh, but again, let's just soak in some of his amazing artwork. So yeah, Six from Sirius. Definitely a book to look for if you're interested in uh, sci-fi, if you're into Epic Illustrated Magazine or Heavy Metal or something. Um, there's just such... I don't know, the... the the thing that appeals to me the most about this style of artwork is there's such precision to some of it. Uh, let me see if I can find this one panel that I'm thinking of in specific. So something like this. The actual machinery there, there's such precision to those lines and, and very um, uh, just ruled and like really... I, I'm not thinking of the words that I, I want to use for this, but then the um, the character development also has a little bit of that. It's almost like a coldness, I guess. It's almost like a architectural type of drawing, but there's still like a lot of feeling within it too. Uh, the characters definitely are more stiff with this kind of thing. You know, you're not getting your Marvel action poses every single panel and stuff. Totally cool with me though. I, I really enjoy the Talking Heads, and then all of a sudden at one point we get into. I'll show you this. We get into a, mi a mishmash of um, collaging there, so some art overlaid with some photos, people's heads, uh, half of it is a moon and stuff like that, and some skulls. I love this page. It's kind of when all hell is breaking loose. Sorry, I'm trying to look past so I can make sure I'm framing it up there. Um, beautiful. Again, the color is just beautiful. So, uh, six from Sirius. Highly recommended. Um, not the most groundbreaking story out there, but uh, a really, really, really fun read as well. 
Um, and, and because it's these older 80s comics, you can usually find them for pretty cheap. I think I found these for like a couple of bucks a piece, two or three dollars a piece maybe, which isn't so bad considering they're all in great shape. And um, Yeah, so there you go. Thanks for watching.